Hello everyone and welcome to Historic Guild Stadium for today's matchup between the West Blue Knights and the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers. My name is Kyle Heavey and we are getting to this game a little late here, early start as the umpires thought that the teams were ready. And here we are already with two outs in the bottom of the first inning with Austin Chanel pitching here for the Blue Knights. Starting off really good with a quick up pop up out, Eddie Rojas able to get that, and now a, uh, a strike three call, and we'll see what Austin can do to get out number three here. Called strike there. Goes up in the count, does Chanel. Long week for the Blue Knights, three games in five days. Outside pitch, goes for a ball. Blue Knights will play on Monday in the playoffs. Oh, this is the last of the regular season right here. Outside pitch, nice job by Rojas, able to reach over and grab it. They're trying to beat out the rain today as it's rain is in the forecast for later on, hoping that does not happen. Outside pitch there. See what we can do here to get this third strike, or excuse me, second strike to get to the third. And outside pitch. Ball four, so that allows a base runner for the Hollis Brookline. Jersey is very much the same colors here today between these teams. The only difference you can see is the white pants for West and the gray pants for Hollis Brookline. So it's going to be kind of fun to try to Figure out who's who in this matchup here between Division Two. Strike right down the middle of the plate there. Cleanup hitter in the lineup, number 25 here for Alice Brookline. We'll get all that information to you in just a few moments here as we're trying to still get things situated. Stealing, Rojas with the throw. And not in time. Nice job there by Izzy to get that ball and make sure that he did not scoot over to third base. So now Hollis Brookline. Base runner on second base. Try to keep this a scoreless game. A ground ball over to short. And the throw over to Stewart at first for the out. And that just like that, West is able to get three outs and keep the Brookline, Hollis Brookline Cavaliers on the off the board. We'll take a quick break here and be back for more action with Manchester Public Television softball action. And here we go to the bottom of the first inning with the leadoff hitter here for West in Jacob Plamondon. Plamondon's had a pretty good season so far. Pitching, fielding, and hitting fouled back this way. So first pitch foul there. And pitching for the Cavaliers is a Jack Lager. Ball call there. Just outside. Umpires for today's game. Behind the plate, we have a Tom Gibson, and out in the field is Bobby Shalani. A 2 1 count. And a ground ball over to short. Let's see while the throw is the first in time. And Plamondon goes down by way of a 6 3 to start off the game, or start off the bottom of the first inning. And we'll see what they can do here with the pitcher, Austin Chanel. Number 10 here, hoping to help the cause. We've seen his speed throughout this season, so it'd be nice to see him be able to uh, 
get a clean hit, maybe steal some bases, help the cause, or get the lead. Strike call, oh, ball there. And Chanel pops one out to center field. He's got a read on it coming in and able to make the catch. And just like that, quickly two outs here for the Blue Knights. Hollis Brookline doing their job here as Jack Lager is uh, making them swing. And so far, a ground out and a fly out. And that brings us to the catcher, Eddie Rojas. Eddie had a big hit last Friday night to basically win the game with a 10 run rule in the fifth inning. So see if he can uh, send it out that way again. And he sends it out, but it's handled. It's going to go for an error there on the shortstop as Eddie was able to scamper down the baseline and be safe at first base. Two out error there allows the catcher, Rojas, able to get on base. And we'll see what Matt Labreck can do. Labreck playing third base today. We didn't see him for a little bit due to an injury, but he's been back and forceful here. So we'll see if he can bring Eddie around. It's going to be a long, long run for Eddie. Strike call. Ooh, you can see Matt was not too pleased with that. Matt Labrack's favorite player is Chris Bryant of the Chicago Cubs, and he sends one over to second base, barely misses the umpire, and able to make a 4-6 out there. And the Hollis Brookline, with their gray pants and their royal blue jerseys, will come back to the home plate to swing and step in the batter's box. 0-0 through the first inning. We'll see what happens in the second with Manchester Public Television's baseball action. Top of the second as Hollis Brookline looks to help their cause out with Brandon Shu, the batter here. Austin Chanel back on the mound for the Blue Knights. Uh, high ball one to start off the second inning. It is a 60 degree overcast day on May 28th, 2021. Foul ball up my way. Did not land on the roof, so I will not be able to go get that. Unfortunately, Shu is playing over there at second base and just made that play to get out of the inning. Inside, just barely misses him. A 2-1 count here to Shu. And he's going to pop one up. Let's see, there's a lot of talk out there. Who's gonna get the ball though? And there we go. Nice play there by number seven. That'd be Jack Jimmy Cavanaugh. And now we have a quick one out. And that brings us to Alex Razabini. Austin's curveball not curving as much as he likes so far. Still got plenty of time to work on it, but a lot of these inside pitches are supposed to be curving a little bit more, and they're not. Outside gets away now. Field is dry for now, but we'll see if the rain comes in, how, what it will be like after that. Hoping that can stay off for a little bit. And now, one, two count. Austin Chanel tr trying to figure out the pitch to get his first strikeout, or second, excuse me. And he founds it on the curveball that I was saying was not working. And instead, he basically got the laces pretty figured out there on that pitch. And now he's got two Ks as Austin Chanel. And Two outs in this second top of the second inning. And now we'll see what Charlie Hale can do. Hale 
Hale able to lay off the first one. Hale, the first baseman. Let's that pitch go by him, so 1-1 one, one count now. And outside ball, so a 2-1 count. And another pitch from Chanel does not catch the white part or the black part of the plate at all. And a 3-1 count. We already have one base on balls from Austin Chanel in this game and trying to avoid another one. Get out of the sitting, one, two, three. And instead, it'll go for ball four as Charlie Hale makes his way 90 feet, hang out with Chris Stewart. And that brings us to Aiden Dufo. Aiden is playing third base today. First time up the bat here. Inside pitch goes for ball one. And a swing and a miss. A 1-1 count now with two outs in the top of the second inning. Oh, and that one just barely misses him. Nice movement there by Aiden, trying not to get hit with the ball. And that will bring a 2-1 count. West trying to keep any runs from scoring as there's a base runner at first. Charlie Hill standing at first base, looking to take off. Foul ball. That makes it a 2-2 count. Innings very much the same right here. First to the second with flyouts, ground balls, Ks. Ugly swing right there by Aiden Dufo. I think he can even joke about that, that he basically was just trying to protect himself and uh, was way ahead of it. Still able to get a little bit of a swing. And now 2-2. Two -two. Runner does go. Ball gets away. That's going to make him go from second, possibly to third. The throw, and not in time. He's kind of off the bag. But the umpire is saying safe. And a stolen base turns into two for Mr. Charlie Hale. And now Aiden Dufo has a chance to get an RBI. But it's a full count, so anything is possible here. And he sends one out there. Jimmy Cavanaugh has to back it up. And excuse me, that goes to Ethan May who will lead off the bottom of the second inning. A great catch to get out of the inning. That'll go as an F9. And just like that, Austin Schnell able to get out of the inning without being scathed. Got scary there for a moment, but able to get out of it. And now West will see what they can do with their bats. Still a scoreless game here at Gill Stadium for Manchester Public Television's baseball action. Jack Lager out here, ready to see what he can do for the second inning as he's got the five, six, seven hitters, and that would be Ethan May, Jimmy Cavanaugh, and Nate Mendez up to bat. And we'll see what Ethan can do, bring that energy from getting that third out to the, the West teammates getting a little loud here. You can I don't know if you can hear them uh, from your computer screens or home television big swing and a miss there Ethan's favorite player is Mookie Betts and swang pretty hard like a Mookie Betts right there 
And a 1-1 one, one count. Lager looks down. Tries to figure out the best pitch to throw here. And that one just a in, little bit inside. And now it's a 2-1 count. Lager throws. And Ethan grounds it over to Short. Short over to first. And that will be in time. A 6-4 out right there. Nice job by Drew to send it over to Charlie Hale. And now we have one out in the bottom of the second. Jimmy Cavanaugh, who had a uh, possible play at the get, get that third out, but instead he let his right fielder get it, and he swings and misses as well. Lots of yelling from the West teammates. The sun kind of starts to come out a little bit. And now another ground ball over to Hale and able to make the same exact play, get the same exact out. And Hollis Brookline bringing the defense. I think that uh, shortstop got his error out of the way. Drew looking sharp. He's definitely a smart, good fielder so far. And Nate Mendez, the designated hitter, hitting in place of Chris Stewart, up to bat now. Pretty far back in the batter's box, close to the catcher and umpire. Strike one. Pitch from Lager sent out, but that's going to land over. Oh, it's actually going to get it at a light post. That's a that's pretty impressive feat to do there from Mendez. Thought the ball was going to go into the bullpen area, but instead hit the light post and bounced out. Now we got two Cavaliers racing it off. And another one sent out that way. See if that one gets over. Oh, hits the top of the roof and bounces over into Maple Street so hopefully no dents for any cars over there. 0-2 count now to Mendez. Got to protect. And he grounds one over to Lager. Lager will throw it over to Hale and just like that three infield hits are not going to do it for the Blue Knights as they just went one, two, three, or in the batter's order, five, six, seven. And now we'll go to the third inning here, and we'll see what Austin Chanel can keep bringing for pitches as this is a scoreless game. And we'll be right back with more action for Manchester Public Television's Baseball Friday. Austin Chanel with the first pitch. It's going to come back this way. Padge McShane, first pitch swing and Izzy Lopez to Chris Stewart, able to get that. <laughs> I think Stewart kind of got himself stuck there for a second. But Patrick McShane, not Irish at all there, able to make a 4-3 play. And Austin Schnell in pretty good shape right now, only allowing two base runners so far. And now a second pitch single here allows the first base runner for Hollis Brookline in this top of the third inning. Jack Bergen up there. And now the pitcher, Jack Logger, up to bat now, hoping to help his cause here. Jack struck out in the first. And now a steal here, a tough throw from Eddie Rojas. Nice play by Izzy to not let that ball keep going. And now Jack Bergen causing some uh, frustration on the base paths. 
a switch hitter. I believe he was a righty in the first inning. And then he was a lefty there. But see what Jack Lager can do with one ball. Swing and a miss there. Oscar Chanel trying to keep the base paths emptier. See what he can do here. It's called strike. One out here in this top of the third. The patience here trying to figure out what's going to happen. Not a strike three. I looks great from my angle up here high above the field. Mind you, I am three stories up. So I totally understand why our plate umpire Tom Gibson can see it better than I can. But it's going to be a 2-2 two -two count now. Ball three. Full count, one out here. Jack Lager, the pitcher, batting for the Cavaliers. Outside, ball four. And that will allow the two Jacks to be on first and second. And that brings us to Drew Grinowitz. Drew walked in the first and got to second base, making some great plays out there in at the shortstop position. So it'd be nice if he could get uh, ground one over to short right now. Another outside pitch. Jacob Plamondon playing short today. I'm sure he would love to gobble up a 6-4-3. Grinowitz uh, way ahead of it, swing and a miss. Zero, zero ball game here from Gill Stadium. Hollis Brookline coming over here to Manchester to face off against the Blue Knights of West. And Austin Chanel getting himself in a little bit of trouble here in the third. It's still some time to figure things out. And outside pitch again, 3-1 count. Austin has had basically four batters each of the innings and uh, if he was able to get something to work here, he would basically have the same exact thing. And ball four it is. See if the manager comes out and talks to him. Austin Chanel has Allow the bases to be loaded here. Eddie Rojas comes over to talk to him. No manager would try to calm him down, say what we need to do, as we have Paul Vashon. Vashon, who grounded out to Plamondon at short. And now there's just nowhere else for any batters to go. You can't walk a man in. That'd be a ugly way to allow us a run. Cavalier teammates giving him some love right now as he stands closer to the pitcher here. He's far up in the batter's box. Called strike. Curve ball that kind of makes it difficult when you're standing that far up in the batter's box. Paul Vashon waits for the pitch. And he sends it up this way, right on top of me. Actually landed on the catwalk behind me. And now 0-2 count. That was one of those where I wanted to catch it if I could. Not able to. Being inside of a room like this. But the windows are open. Temperature has dropped one degree already. Chanel gets him swinging. He has nowhere to go. It's not even a really a point to throw it down because no one was going anywhere with the bases loaded. And now Chanel 
able to get Vash on to strike out, and that brings us to Brandon Shu. Shu, who flew out to Kavanaugh in center field in the second inning, up to bat again here in the third, trying to help his team out, but there are two outs. He's got to be smart. And he grounds one over there, but it gets through his legs. That's going to allow two Cavaliers to score. An unfortunate E5 by Matt Labreck allows more runs to come around and score. And now it is 3-0 Hollis Brookline on a Matt Labreck error that got through the legs. The ball kind of got thrown around a little bit. But Brandon Shu standing on third base, pretty impressed with what should have been a routine five unassisted. And now the Cavaliers leading this 3-0. Unfortunate string of events there to allow three runs to come around and score. It's exactly what Coach was not hoping for today as we saw enough errors in the game on Monday versus Trinity. An 8-6 West lead that day. Brandon Shu with the three RBI. Brings in Jack Lager, Jack Bergen, and Drew Grinowitz. And now Alex Razzaloni up to bat now. Bouncing ball. Hollis Brooklyn has got a big team today. They brought up their JV. So there's Razaboni, excuse me. I, my apologies to Alex if he watches this as he will take a stroll up to first base with another walk. A long inning here for Austin Chanel. And now we'll have a meeting on the mound. Coach is going to come out and talk to you. Trying to not allow any more runs to score, but he's throwing a lot of pitches here. No one warming up in the bullpen here just yet. Charlie Hale, the next batter up who walked in the second as well. Coach will stroll back to the dugout saying thanks up for allowing me to come talk to my player. Obviously, second base is open with the only runners at first and third. So if Hale is to walk again, he was stranded at third base last inning and seeing if he helps his cause now. Called strike one. See if Austin Chanel can get himself out of this inning. Foul ball up this way, now up 0-2 in the count. Top of the third inning, Hollis Brookline with the lead. Still plenty of time for West to get some runs themselves. They got to make better contact of the ball, but Jack Lager doing a good job pitching for them. And Austin Chanel sh should have gotten out of this inning, but a Matt Lebrecht error has kept this inning going. Curveball just not working as well. It's a, at least the third time that Eddie's had to reach behind the batter and catch it. Nice work there by Charlie Hale to try to not get hit in the backside of his body. And now a 1-2 count. Outside, 2-2. Two, two. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here. A crushed foul ball there. Absolutely got a hold of that one, but was way ahead of it. Two 
Two-two count, two outs. Oshnell trying to just get through this top of the third inning for this West team. And now a ball just barely goes foul there. Makes its way down to the West bullpen area. Quite not bad here between Charlie Hale and Austin Chanel. Lots of foul balls. Chanel just not able to get that dominant pitch to get the third out. And now a fly up in the air. Plamondon backing out. He's calling for it and he's gonna make that out. The damage has been done by the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers as three runs were able to score. It is now up to the Blue Knights to try to capitalize and score some runs themselves. We'll be right back with Manchester Public Television's baseball action after this. Kyle Heavey back here at Gill Stadium for this Division II matchup between the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers and the West Blue Knights. And we have Izzy Lopez up to bat first. Izzy's had a busy week playing second base today. He's pitched a great game last week. Uh, it's just been fun to see this player all throughout the season as uh, takes a ball one there from Jack Lager, still pitching out here. Eight, nine, one. Big swing from Izzy there. Izzy's favorite baseball player is Derek Jeter and definitely had a harder swing than Derek Jeter did on that one. And he sends one up to the middle, ranging over as the second baseman to throw to first in time to get the out. Well done there. Second baseman did his thing there. Able to range pretty far over was Brandon Shu, And we have now one out here in the third. Chris Fiorienza up to bat now. Fiorienza taking a called strike. Lager has not allowed a base runner over this last five hitters. And Fiorienza sends a little scroller down, able to make the play as Lager to get that out. Sending it over to his first baseman in Charlie Hale. And now like that, quickly two outs. A 4-3, now a 1-3. And now we'll see what Jacob Lamonte can do who went out by 6-3 before. Grounding out over to the shortstop. Grinowitz doing a good job over there at short. And he, Lamondon tries to send one in between the baseline and the third baseman, just sent it foul. Lamont and sending it over there, and just like that, finally we get a clean hit from the Blue Knights. Jacob Lamont and standing on first with a two out single here in the third inning. And now it's Austin Chanel's turn. See if he can do the exact same thing. Able to send one through a hole in the infield. Can hear the, the West teammates cheering him on. Austin looking to be an electrician after his playing career is done and hoping to bring some uh, energy and electricity to this West squad. If he can get a nice single, double, who knows what. Ball wide, the throw down, sliding over there. The ball kind of gets away, but Plamondon says, all right, I'm staying. Ask from timeout from Bobby Saloni. Now a 1-1 count. Kyle 
Kind of looking to send it towards right field the way his foot's planted. Takes a strike go by him. So Jacob Lamont in a second, the furthest any of the Blue Knights have been so far in this game here in the bottom of the third. Chanel swings. That will go down as strike three. He didn't even try running to first. Not pleased with what that was. And he'll get a strikeout on the scorebook. We'll take a break here and go to the fourth for more Manchester Public Television baseball action. We'll be right back. Hollis Brookline's Hayden Dufo will lead us off here as we go to the top of the fourth inning. Austin Chanel still pitching out here for the West Blue Knights after allowing three runs in the third inning. And we'll see what Dufo can do, who was up just last inning, flying out to right field as he fouls one off here. Excuse me, he was up in the second. He was the only batter who didn't get around to swinging in the third inning. So he was actually up in the second inning to get that third out as Ethan May was able to make that nice catch to get out of that second inning. But now here we are on the fourth and he sends one out. Let's see if Florienza can make a catch and he does. And in two pitches, one out. Good job there by Austin Chanel trying to Get things a little bit easier here for these Blue Knights after a long third inning. And now we'll have Padge McShane. Padrick is his real name, but he goes with uh, with Padge. So, see what the Irishman can do here. Takes a ball one. Padge playing out in center field. Interesting to see him at the bottom of the lineup. And he grounds one over there. See if Plamondon over to Stewart. In time, says Bobby Soloni. And now we have two outs. Chanel doing his work here in the fourth. Trying to get those bats back up there. And that brings us to the top of the lineup in Jack Bergen. Jack has flown out to the catcher and gotten a hit and scored. Last inning, he sends one up here. Plamond and ranging, ranging over, has a good eye of it, and is able to make that catch. Good job there, eyeing it, getting over there, and getting that third out. What really was only like a seven pitch at bat for the Hollis Brookline. Austin Schnell starting to feel it, but now it's up to the bats. Down three nothing for West to get back into this game. We'll see what they can do here as we go to the bottom of the fourth. From Gill Stadium's Manchester Public Television's Baseball Action. Hey, Saza Rojas up to bat here, but we have a new pitcher for the Hollis Brookline, and that is the first base informally, Charlie Hale. So we'll see if that how this works out for them. A called strike. Apparently seen a little bit differently there by Eddie. 1-1 one, one count now as that went for a ball. Eddie Sazo Rojas sends it over towards Maple Street. Way foul. No chance for any of the Cavaliers to be able to go get that. Eddie's favorite food is pizza. Something I've had way too much this week, but Eddie doesn't mind. He could eat it every day, he says. And he fought, grounds one over there to third. Long throw across the diamond. And in time for one out in the fourth inning. Good job there by the Aiden Dufo sending it across the diamond. And Paul Vashon able to get that out. And that brings us to the next batter. None other than... Number 12, Matt Lebrecht. Lebrecht looking to hopefully make up for his error at third base. As he fouls one into the mitt. Well, 
Lebrecht goes out on a feeler's choice. Curveball right there, kind of got him fooled. It's one, two count. Outside ball, makes it a two, two count now. And the inside pitch gets him stranded there. And down by way of a strikeout is Lebrecht. And that brings us now to Ethan May, the third batter of this fourth inning. Wes has had some luck with uh, two outs here, a couple errors and singles allowing them to get on base, but just not able to do much more. And the pitch from Hale, outside. Ethan's goal for the season is about 300. And after grounding out to the shortstop, he needs to uh, try to get something going here. Inside pitch. Ethan wearing the black underneath his eyes. Even though it's still cloudy out, the glare could be sometimes bad. You need to be able to see that ball out there in right field. And Ethan is smart with making sure that he's got the vision. And the vision didn't help on that pitch as that was a strike down the middle, but it, with a 3-0 count, it's it's easy to see why he was taking. And ball four. As I was saying, West likes to have fun with two, but they need to get the base runner another 270 feet to try to get some runs on the board. And we'll see what Jimmy Cavanaugh can do. Jimmy's first time out bat, he ground out to shortstop as well. As he follows one back my way. Lands on the catwalk again. Pretty impressive to have two foul balls back over here, landing on the catwalk behind me. Hale looking over at Kavanaugh at first. And he's gonna ground one. Let's see if the long throw. Able to get two extremely long outs. Wonderful job there by that third baseman. He's able to field it cleanly and have a strong throw. And a great job there by Aiden Dufo. And we'll head to the top of the fifth inning. Hollis Brookline still leading it 3 0. And we'll see what Wes can do to try to keep it that way. For Manchester Public Television's baseball action, I'm Kyle Heavey. We'll be right back. First baseman Paul Vashon leading it off for the Cavaliers as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Austin Chanel still out here pitching and had a great fourth inning. Let's see if he can do another great fifth inning as a curveball gets Vashon kind of a little uneasy in the legs. And he sends one into the gap. It looks like Ethan has a good read on it, able to make that catch for out number one. Actually, I Drew Grinowitz the bat now as he sends one out there into the outfield as well for Florienza has a read on it and able to make the two-handed catch so two very quick outs here helping the cause and now it's Paul Vashon sorry I was all wrong Jack Lager was up the bat before as the leadoff as he was able to fly out to right field Vashon has been over two in today's game. Swing and a miss there. He ground out to shortstop. Splamondon in the first and struck out in the third. Let's see what he can do in the fifth. Down 0-1 on the count. Foul the one back to the screen. Paul 
Paul Vashon playing out in left field. He's going to have a long run if he is to strike out here. Bouncer ball. Blumond is saying that's a good idea to try to get him chasing. But he did not chase. And the pitch called strike three. Vashon kind of looking away, not pleased with that, but Wes will take it. A one, two, three, fifth inning. Now, let's see what the Blue Knights can do with their bats. They have been very quiet this game, and they need to try to drink a Red Bull or a Monster and get themselves back into it. We'll be right back to see what happens here as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Manchester Public Television's baseball action. Nate Mendez, the batter here in the bottom of the fifth inning. One strike on him, now one ball. We are back here covering the last regular season game for the West team. As playoffs start on Monday, Memorial Day, Mendez fouls one off. Nate grounded to the pitcher in the second inning. See if he can get the ball a little bit further than the pitcher this time. And he is down by way of a strikeout. Designated here, Nate Mendez, not able to uh, see the ball well, apparently, and he's struck out. And now we'll see what Izzy Lopez can do here. Another swing and a miss. Now down 0-2. Charlie Hale bringing some heat here as now Izzy grounds it over to third. The throw over from Dufo and that will go for out number two. 5-3 will be read on the scoreboard. And now Chris Fleorienza making some good Two-handed catches out there in left field today. Let's see if he can send one out there. As late swing and a miss. The number nine batter, he grounded out to the pitcher. And now he sends it out to the outfield. Anyone going to make a play? And unfortunately, they are. And just like that, one, two, three. Go to the Blue Knights. Hollis Brookline in control of this game, up 3 nothing, And now we'll go to the top of the sixth. See if they will score some more runs or if Blue Knights can figure things out. We'll be right back with more coverage from Gill Stadium for Manchester Public Television's baseball action. Back for the sixth inning here as we have some defensive changes. Austin Chanel no longer pitching. He'll be at third base. And moving over from third base to now be the pitcher is Matt Lebrecht. So we'll see what Lebrecht can do here for a pretty good day from Austin Chanel. Five innings pitched. He did give up an unfortunate three runs due to an error from Lebrecht. But overall, he had a decent day with three Ks from what I see. A couple walks and overall, you know, he will get charged with the loss at this rate. But let's see what Lebrecht can do. And Brandon Shu up to bat now for the Cavaliers. High first pitch there. You can see the jumping from Lebrecht saying, oops, I did not mean to do that. Shu playing second base. He's flew, flown out to center and got on with an error on Lebrecht. Uh, way ahead of that one, sends a foul. Breck was able to get around to third base, bringing all three runs in for the Cavaliers. So right now he's in a pretty good position. Breck, ball, little, little wide.
wild right now, trying to figure this all out. Izzy Lopez saying, take a deep breath between pitches. Ball wide, so 3-1 count now. Hollis Brookline down there on the Massachusetts New Hampshire border, just west of Nashua. Still a good 45 minute drive to get here from there. And now I sent out to center field one hopper and now will allow a single there. And now just like that, Brandon Shu with a lead off single. Razabani up to bat now. But Breck having some issues, looks at the ground complaining about it, but that allows Shu to move up to second. He's looking, he's looking, he's kind of in no man's land right now, and he does not throw it down. See what LeBrecht thinks here. Teammates are trying to give him some love. Apparently he slipped on the mound, or slipped off the mound, and did not get a good footing. So some troubles with the pitching mound right here for Matt LeBrecht, allowing the runner to get to second base. And he sends one out to Fiorienza, looking like he's got it. Got a good read of it, able to drop it down. And now he's stuck in no man's land. He's going to be tagged out. What a boneheaded base running play there by Brandon Shu. I know you get a little bit excited there, thinking that they're going to make some errors, but West did not make any errors on that. And the base runner at second thrown out, leading too far. And now we have two outs. Lebrecht able to breathe a little easily now after what will be considered a 7-6-4 out. And Charlie Hale up to bat now. Pitcher versus pitcher here. Swing and a miss. Lebrecht finding some love from the pitching mound. Had trouble for the first two batters, but now is able to get things straightened out. Now a one-two count. And strike three. Matt Lebrecht able to come in. It looked like it was going to be a wild evening. And just like that, Able to get some good love from his fielders and get that last strikeout. And after all that, we will go to the bottom of the sixth. Still a 3-0 Hollis Brookline lead. We'll be back from Gill Stadium with more action here. Kyle Heavey with Manchester Public Television. We'll be right back. Jacob Plamonen out here. Leadoff hitter in the bottom of the sixth inning. West giving them some love. The teammates here wanting to get something happen. They have to string some things together. They've been very quiet. Inside pitch goes for ball one. As we still have a chance here in this game. Ball gets away. Charlie Hale back out here pitching for the Cavaliers. And Plamondon trying to get on the base paths. He's gonna foul one over my head, onto the roof. Two one count here, and he slices one over there to the second baseman, able to make a range throw over, and nice job by Brandon Shu, allowing a nice easy throw to. Mm -hmm. I believe that'll be Quinn Connors. 
out there at second at first base now. But either way, West down to their last five outs. And we'll see what Austin Chanel, Chanel sends it out there, looking like a blooping, but Shu is able to range out and make the easy out. Just not enough power on that from Chanel. And that brings us to the catcher. Eddie Saza Rojas. Eddie's gotten on an error and has grounded out to the third baseman. It's third time of the bat. Been a tough day for many of these Blue Knights hitters. Now, a 1-1 one, one count now. Eddie's goal for the season is to hit a home run. Obviously, this would be a good spot to do it, but only one out, or excuse me, two outs with no one on. You need to just string together some base hits. Inside, able to just barely get out of the way. I don't know if West just doesn't like playing in the chillier weather or what it is. They scored pretty well on Friday, last Friday and Monday when the heat was a little up. Playing against Trinity on Monday. And strike three. Eddie Rojas goes down. And Charlie Hale, helping Hollis Brookline, will go to the top of the seventh inning. A 3-0 Cavalier lead. Running out of time for the Blue Knights. We'll see what happens. We'll be back with more action here from Gill Stadium. Kyle Heavey with Manchester Public Television. We'll be right back. Matt Lebrecht back out here pitching for the Blue Knights. And now we have a replacement batter. A good day there by Aiden Dufo, but it's going to be Zach Lucier's chance here to get some playing time. A swing and a miss there. Lebrecht having a decent sixth inning. Got in a little bit of trouble. Thankfully, some boneheaded base running by Brandon Shu helped him get an out. And now a high fly ball. Plamondon running in saying he's got it, he's got it, and he does got it. Poor English there on my part, I will admit, but either way, one out. Let's see if we got some more replacement players. Looks like we do. Gavin Nudson. And the pitch from Lebrecht, bouncers. Lucier fly out, one out here. And now we'll see what Nudson can do here. Having a good eye right now. Lebrecht's seeing it and saying, hey, I'm not swinging, man. You got to get it over this plate. Called strike. Ball. Briefly gets away from Rojas, able to grab it. Skies get a little dark to the west, trying to beat out this rain. Obviously, we are in the seventh inning, but it'd be nice to see West to score some runs. And now a little ground ball over to Lopez. Lopez gets it over to Stewart, and that will do it for the second out. Nudson grounding out to second base. And now the Blue Knights, two outs. On the Cavaliers in the seventh inning. And that gives us to Jack Bergen. Bergen flew out to Plamondon his last time up to bat. And he is hitting a leg. He'll take a, not really a limping walk down to first base, but he know that he feels that a little bit. And now we got more replacements here for this Cavalier squad. Trying to keep up with it as quickly as I can as it's all me up here, Zach Sommer. Second 
player named Zach of this inning. Another left-handed batter. And now he's already going. Oh, Plamondon's not able to get that throw. Lebrecht saw it, didn't pitch. But what a heck of a job there by Bergen to see something and take off. Still not even a pitch here to Sommer. A wild outside pitch. Eddie able to use all of his wingspan to reach over and snag it before it went anywhere. Breck trying it again, not working. Two, state, two straight wild balls here. Has Sommer kind of feeling like he's gonna get to first base. Ball three, he won't be swinging at this one. Rio count. See if Lebrecht can get the strike call. He does. Looked outside from my angle, but umpire Mr. Tom Gibson sees it differently. And that will go for ball four. Lebrecht getting himself a little bit of issues here. A lot of uh, Hollis Brookline yelling going on there, trying to figure out if there was going to be a pinch runner. There was not. Why did he come off the bag like he was going over? I was confused there. But Grinowitz now up to bat. And now we do have a pinch runner here. Over at first base will be none other than Gavin Nudson. Inside pitch there. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. And it sends it way up in the air. Kavanaugh, Florienza running back. Florienza says he's got it. And he does for the third out in the top of the seventh. Running out of time are the West Blue Knights. They are down three runs. And now it's up to them to tie up this game or win it. We'll see what Matt Lebrecht, Ethan May, and Jimmy Kavanaugh can do here. We'll be back to see how this game pans out with Manchester Public Television's baseball action. We'll be right back. Zach Lucier, the pitcher here for Hollis Brookline, looking to come in and close this game for them. We just watched his warm-ups. He's got some fire to his arm, so we'll see what the big righty can do here as we have Matt Lebrecht up to bat. Pitcher versus pitcher now, and we'll see what Lebrecht can do. Down low, ball one. West being very quiet today. Late swing there. I don't know if that was a uh, slider or what that was, but. Really a last minute swing there by Matt. And a grounder easily taken by Lucier. Lucier will get it over to first 
And that will do it for the first out in the seventh inning. Matt Lebrecht, a 1-3, grounds it easily over to the first baseman, Charlie Hale. And now we'll see what Ethan can do here. Ethan's been busy out there in right field, made a couple catches. A 3-0 Hollis Brookline lead. May is able to back out a little bit, able to avoid that. Lights still not on here. We're trying to get through the whole entire game without having to use the lights. And fouled up this way. Hits just below me. I gave a, uh, at least an attempt to try to catch that. Raindrops starting to fall a little bit now that I look out. Ball low. 2 1 count. And he sends one over to second base, able to make the play shoe over to Hale. And quite a play there, even giving some love. And now West down to their final out, down three runs. Tough spot to be in here. As it looks like we're gonna have a replacement. A Amar Duty up to bat now. See what Amar can do here. He tries to check a swing to no avail though. Do witty. Swings now down 0 2. Replacing Jimmy Cavanaugh. Let's see what this next pitch is. And he fouls one, or excuse me, slices one over there. Shoe to Hale. And the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers able to come into historic Gill Stadium and take a 3-0 victory. A heck of a game here for both squads. Really a Matt Lebrecht error was the only thing that really changed this game. That would have been out number three of that inning, but instead, Hall is able to score two runs. Uh, just an all around good day here. Uh, I gotta say, Austin Chanel and Matt Lebrecht pitching pretty well. Uh, if I gotta give a player of the game, I guess I'm gonna give it to uh, boy, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, Jack Bergen did a pretty good job. He did score that g first run, which turned out to be the game winner. And we will end it here for Manchester Public Television's baseball action. For Executive Director Jason Cody, Operations Specialist Joe Lahr, Operations Assistant Brendan McCormick. My name is Kyle Heavey. This has been a Manchester Public Television presentation of high school baseball. Sponsored by NHIAA. We'll be back Monday for the playoff action between the Memorial Crusaders and the Central Little Green. And good luck to all the athletes in the playoffs over the next week as it's going to be a crazy time around the state of New Hampshire. So thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great evening. Stay safe, and we'll be back soon. Take care.